Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In making the, de the second denture setup, we are going to attempt to balance the occlusion. Now from the information that we've had in the lecture and from the information on the handout, uh, we're going to show a short demonstration on how to begin to set the teeth so they balance. And I think with all uh, three of these references, you will be able to balance the uh, occlusion with these teeth fairly successfully. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to pay attention for the first time to the inclination of the condylar guidance. Now normally we get this uh, registration from the patient through the protrusive check bite, but in this case we will go with the manufacturer's specification of a 30 degree condylar inclination. So set your condyle at 30 and tighten it down. Now that's our condylar determinant. The second thing is we should have a 15 degree Bennett angle. And as we look straight down on the articulator, uh, you all know how to adjust the Bennett angle, so I'm setting that at 15 degrees, red on the lower part of the instrument, and tightening down the nut so it doesn't turn when we start to use the instrument. That takes care of two of the determinants in the condylar area, and the other side has already been set. Now we have to pay some attention also, also to the incisal guidance and the manufacturer specification for this tooth, the Pilkington Turner tooth, calls for a 30 degree incisal guidance. So let's set that at 30 degrees. And once again, tighten it down. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is setting the anterior teeth, which takes a, a minimum amount of work, and then the posterior teeth in a way that the teeth will balance. Now I'm starting at a point where the six or the 12 anterior teeth have been set in the method that was described before, and by this time you have all accomplished. But for the first time, we're going to move the instrument as the patient would move his jaw into lateral excursions, and we can see right away that we have some interference. In this uh, particular area, it's in the cuspid. As I move uh, the jaw toward you, toward the screen, actually, this is the working side, of course. The mandible's coming toward us. And at this time, the cuspid hits a little prematurely and brings the entire mandible out of articulation. See the centrals uh, lift up there a little bit? So now this can be adjusted two ways. First, we can adjust the upper or the lower by grinding on the tooth, or we can actually take the whole tooth and bodily move it out of the uh, uh, plane of occlusion slightly. And that's what I'll do in this case. And I suggest that uh, we, at this time, need minimal grinding for this uh, exercise. So let's either move the lower tooth down or the upper tooth up. Now aesthetically, uh, in working on a practical case, we have to think of aesthetics and make our decision based on that. Uh, at this point, it really doesn't matter too much uh, which we do. I'm going to try to move this maxillary cuspid up slightly and see if we can clear uh, so the cuspid does not uh, become the only tooth that contacts and take that pin off the incisal table. Now once again, this just re reemphasizes the point that in denture occlusion, we are not striving for a cuspid guided occlusion. If we were, that first motion that you saw might be, might have been very good. Now I'm still hitting slightly, so I'm going to take that out of contact just a little bit more. At this point, we're usually talking in terms of parts of a millimeter and a very small adjustment can easily make a big difference. Now at this point as I go through, I'm clearing or I'm, I'm hitting the cuspid area about the same time I'm hitting in the incisal area. It's very close. And the incisal pin is still, at this point, is still on the table. The incisal pin is still on the table when we go through these motions. Now because we're going to demonstrate just on the one side, I'm not going to uh, adjust the other cuspid relationship, but we would do it, of course, in the same way. 
Now, when we set the posterior teeth, the first part of the, of the tooth setting is exactly the same uh, as was shown in the other demonstration, and you've all done this before. So off camera, I'm going to set the first two teeth on the lower, and then we will set the, the maxillary first bicuspid uh, in, in an attempt to balance the, uh, the teeth, and I will show that. At this time, I will go ahead and set the first two teeth off of camera. The two lower bicuspids have been set using the same criteria that we used before, and now I'm ready to set the maxillary first bicuspid, but this time I'm going to try to set the tooth so that it balances. So as before, we will make some an area of warm wax so we can set the tooth in. And the first thing we'll do is just make it interdigitate correctly. But then while the wax is still soft, we will move it into working and balancing positions and see how much change we have to make in the setup so the tooth will balance. Now at this point, I want to make sure that the condor balls are up against the stops because this is simply closing in a centric position. Now that interdigitates fine on the hinge, but let's move it into working and see what happens. See, it hits, it hits early on the first bicuspid. So we have to make some minor adjustments in the setting of this tooth so that the tooth is in good contact in the working position, such as it is here. See how the cuspid is clearing through. Now that's what we want to do. Sometimes this has to be done by adjusting, uh, by grinding the surfaces of the tooth. We try to come as close as we can by actually just setting the teeth. Okay, now that is fairly close. So this time I'm going to um, place that into position by putting a little more wax around the tooth itself, just enough to hold it. And then I'm going to go ahead off camera and set the next two lower teeth, the molars. And we'll take a closer look at that time at the tooth we've just set and then try to set the rest of the maxillary teeth so that they balance. Now you can see I have completed setting the lower teeth, the posterior teeth, and only have to set the upper bicuspid and uh, two molars to balance this side. Of course, we're only doing this half, halfway because we can't really balance the other side until we set the teeth on the other side. So this procedure is a little tricky and, and takes, uh, takes some time. But now as you see, as this tooth passes through the embrasure, the cuspid is coming very close to touching. This is the central, and we have fairly good balance in the working position only at this time. Now let's move on to the second bicuspid. I'm going to turn it around so I can work on it a little better. Let's again heat up the wax in the area where we're working. And try to set the second bicuspid in balance, at least on the, uh, in the working movement. So we'll set it in the approximate position. Once again, close the instrument. And then make minor movements and adjustments with the fingers at this time. And just take it through excursions once to see about where we are here. And I see I have some minor adjustments to make, although it's close. These teeth are manufactured in such a way is that they're probably easier to balance than any other tooth, including the flat plane tooth, which may not seem reasonable to you at this time, but is very difficult to balance. Now I've put just a little bit more wax there so I can move the tooth around slightly. And then as I move the upper arm of the articulator away from me, I'm really bringing the jaw into working toward me. 
And at this time, as you can see, it comes with the embrasure pretty nice. Now, the balancing of the denture is actually refined at a later date by grinding on the teeth. At this time, we want to um, come as close as we possibly can by setting the teeth in a relationship that they can be balanced uh, as closely as possible now, and then later by minor adjustments by grinding on the occlusal surfaces. Okay, that's pretty close for the time being. Let's go to the uh, first maxillary molar. Now, I said pretty close because I fully expect to go back and make minor adjustments, especially when we go to the other side, and this side becomes the balancing side. And the idea in a denture, when we speak of balance, of course, is to have all of the teeth gliding through smoothly from cuspid back to the second molar, evenly on the working side with no interferences, but at the same time having something touch on the other side of the mouth so the dentures don't touch on one side and then flop up on the other side because there's, no, there's nothing supporting it. Okay, I'm going to come around the other way again, put the denture uh, articulator back into centric and close very slowly. And I find out this time that I'm quite a bit off, so while the wax is still soft, I'm going to move that down into the approximate position. And then at that time, at this time, actually seal the tooth down a little bit better with some more wax. And this wax has a tendency not to cool under these lights, and the same thing will happen in the laboratory where we have 125 Bunsen burners going. This does cause somewhat of a problem. You have to be patient with that wax and let it cool between steps. Now at this time, the interdigitation is correct with the tooth, but when I go into working, I can see that it's touching it just a little bit heavily and that tooth has actually moved. Now I'll come back. And that's not bad. As a matter of fact, it's pretty good. I'm going to move into working again. The jaw is coming toward you. The top of the instrument is going the other way. And see how those grooves slip through the, um, the cusp slip through the grooves? That's the way the teeth were manufactured. And that's the way they are supposed to be set. So at this time, I'm going to go right on with a second molar. Because that is close when it when we're talking about setting teeth into a balanced position. So setting the second molar is done simply the same way we did it before. And the procedure for balancing is the same. Now we're going tooth by tooth, and that is the way that you should do it in the laboratory. Once again, we close. You'll notice that on the, the lower, as I mentioned before, this distal buccal cusp of the second molar is quite high, and that gives us a, a natural uh, curve of speed, whether we want to put one in the denture case or not. It's kind of built in with the uh, manufacture of the teeth. Okay, now that tooth is a little bit to the distal, and I need more wax in there. That's not too bad. And nothing is holding it yet, so let's seal it down with some wax. And at this point, it looks like it's going to be very close, at least in centric relation on the hinge. Now when we move it into the excursion, um, we have to reanalyze it. Sometimes when we have balancing interference, that is if the jaw were moving in the other direction, the first place that we get an interference, that is something that takes the whole a line of teeth out of articulation is an interference back here in the second molar area. So there is a possibility that this tooth will have to be adjusted at a later time. Now, I've done one thing, and I might as well point it out here because I'm sure this will happen to many of you. Wax has, has come down onto the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and in the embrasures, and when excess wax starts forming, uh, the time to take it off is right when it happens, or pretty soon. Um, we're working in a mass of wax, and we can't accomplish much that way. So I'm going to remove the excess wax right now. Now, as I come together in centric, the, the ball of the articulator is against the stop. Once again, we go into working, and we can see that we are close. 
Now you notice that the mesial buccal cusp of the second maxillary molar is uh, a little bit to the distal as far as uh, going through the groove that has been prepared for us in the lower tooth. So what we should do here is actually move the second molar back just a little bit on the lower and leave this where it is and therefore uh, that groove will allow the cusp to pass through it in the prescribed manner. You can see that space in there that actually we have, a, we have an interference. It touches too soon. This can either be done now or if you are satisfied that it is within the uh, what we call the adjustable range, we can adjust something like that at the time the dentures are finished uh, when we accomplish the selective grinding, which is the final adjustment of the teeth for balance. At this particular time, this completes one initial setting uh, of one side of the denture. Now the same thing has to be done on the other side, but we can go further at this point because as we set the teeth on this side of the denture and as we bring this side into working, we can check with the side we've just finished to make sure that we are having contact uh, so the denture will be balanced. That is, in denture, we are talking about uh, contact on the working side. At the same time the jaw comes toward you, we should have smooth gliding occlusion through all the posterior teeth and at the same time have contact all the way along the other side. To help us analyze a balanced occlusion a little more carefully, Let's look at this complete denture setup that has been uh, completed. And as I move the articulator into working, as shown in the bottom picture on the monitor, the opposite side, or the top picture, is the balancing side, and those teeth should contact. Now, as you can see in the working side, in the lower picture, everything is gliding through smoothly. There's not one cusp that raises everything else out of occlusion. Everything goes through nice and, nice and smoothly. And on the other side, although you can't see it from this view, those teeth, those lingual cusps of the uppers are in contact with the lower teeth, and this gives us our balanced occlusion. Now if I tip the tic articulator up just a little bit here, you can see that these teeth indeed are still in contact. And this is the difficult thing to accomplish when balancing the denture occlusion. Now the last thing I want to show in the balance case is the protrusive balance. And these teeth are manufactured in such a way is from this view that you're looking at right now, if the articulator is moved straight back and you'll notice that the pin is still on the incisal table and it was in the view I just showed you a minute ago, that when the articulator is moved straight back or what we're really looking at is the patient's jaw moving straight forward, the cusp tips are still in contact. And this is a protrusive balance. It means if the patient moves his jaw forward, he doesn't just hit in the front and have the dentures flip up in the back, or he doesn't just touch in the back prematurely and have the dentures flip up in the front. This is protrusive balance. So in the balanced uh, denture, uh, we are talking about a patient who moves uh, the mandible in different positions without food in the mouth. We're not talking about chewing or chewing efficiency. At this time, we're talking about balanced occlusion with nothing in the mouth. The patient just puts the teeth together and makes the motions of the jaw in different positions. And to stabilize the dentures, the dentures are balanced. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.